Hi everyone, it's Susan Jones and welcome back to my Sunday Spotlight. If you've been following along with my YouTube channel, you will know that this December I'm actually uploading videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and of course I'm keeping my Sunday Spotlight for you. So already this month I've uploaded a kids gift guide right here on Tuesday, and that is a video with some of my boys' favorite toys uh, and books that they've loved this year. So it's great for kids ages four through eight. So if you have any kids that you are buying for this holiday season, check that video out. And then I also shared a little vlog right here about what it was like to decorate my house for the Christmas season. So I'm excited to just share a few fun videos with you to keep you entertained and keep myself entertained this holiday season. For today's Sunday Spotlight, I'm actually gonna go ahead and share four different winter or holiday books that I love reading with my students and some activities to go along with them. As usual, I was gonna say as always, but it's not always, always. But like most of the time, I actually have a freebie that I will share with you for one of the books. So follow along and let's get started. <laughs> All right, the first book I wanna share about is this book right here. It is a current favorite and it is called Blizzard and it is written and illustrated by John Rocco. And he actually is the author and illustrator of the very popular book Blackout as well. And I actually shared this on my Instagram right here and many of you also shared that you love this book. So if you haven't heard of it, it is such a good one to add to your library. Let me tell you a few things you can do with this book. First and foremost, this story is written about a real story when John Rocco was 10 years old, and it's about the blizzard of 1978, where they got 40 inches of snow in two days. Now, up here in Massachusetts, we are used to our fair share of blizzards, but depending on where you and your students live, they may not have any experience with it, and the way John Rocco writes this story and the illustrations he uses kind of takes anybody and just puts you right in the main character's shoes. It is just beautifully beautifully written and students really enjoy that it was based on a true story. The book starts on a Monday and actually throughout this story John Rocco puts Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, he will put the day of the week somewhere in the illustration so you can really get a sense of the sequence of events that happens throughout the story. So this is a great thing for students to kind of realize what changes each day and it's a great author's craft lesson to use if you are teaching your own students about you know going in sequential order or telling things that happen first, next, last, and even if you aren't using those words, you can see the way John Rocco told his story, how things change over time. Now, spoiler alert, at the end of the story, the little boy who is featured, which is John Rocco, is the only one light enough to actually go over the snow. He has to put tennis rackets on his feet, and he takes a sled, and he goes to the corner market, because it's been five days, and their family is running out of food, and so are a lot of the neighbors, and the plows haven't come, so he actually has to go on a little trek and get food for his family and his neighbors. And something I would love for students to do as a little writing example is, first of all, they can explain how they would feel if they were the one to go out on that adventure and give some reasons why they felt that way, so a little opinion writing. But then also before the little boy goes on his trek, he makes a little list. And I think one of the things he writes down is like a candy bar, has a little star next to it, and I'm guessing that's for himself. But he writes a list of what his family needs from the store. And so I would have students think about some of the essentials that they would need, them and their family, and see if they could make their own list for trekking to the store during a snowstorm. As with all my book videos in the past, I will go ahead and link them all down below in the description, but also don't forget, if you're teaching virtually, there are so many great readings of all of these books somewhere on YouTube, so go ahead and find a family-friendly one if you want to share this with your kids. All right, another fun one that I feel like you see all over the kindergarten first grade world is Sneezy the Snowman by Maureen Wright. And there's a reason for that. This is just a fun, it's a rhyming book, it's easy to read, and the kids just love it. Basically, it's about a snowman right here who gets sneezy because he's always so cold and so when, when he's cold he needs something to warm him up so he'll drink some hot cocoa and then what do you think happens when the snowman drinks hot cocoa he melts and the kids have to build him up again and he keeps you know getting colder and colder and so he keeps trying to find ways to warm himself up and melting 
So it's a cute little book. The kids love it. If you do a quick Google search for any Sneezy the Snowman activities, you'll often see ones that look like this or like this, where students will do a little craft of their snowman melted and you have to tell what happened to make the snowman melt. So in terms of some things that I would focus on when I am teaching this book is first and foremost, you can talk about the rhyming aspect. I know my son in kindergarten right now is working a lot on his phonological awareness and listening for different rhyming words. And this is a rhyming book, so easy place to start. Also, it is great for cause and effect. Again, on every single instance that they have the snowman, like I said, drinks hot cocoa or he sits in a hot tub and that is the cause, what is the effect? Taking that one step further, I like for my first grade students, I like for them to add a page to this book. I always tell them, pretend that the author Maureen Wright reached out to you and she needs your help trying to add another page to Sneezy the Snowman. So we go ahead and we think of our own new cause and effect that could happen that follows along with the story. Lastly, one of the fun little author's details that I like to teach my own first grade students are the use of ellipsis or the dot dot dot. And we talk about how they use this to build suspense and Maureen Wright actually uses that continuously in this book. I'll see if I can show you right here. I don't know if you can actually see that, but it says, he found one and smiled, I like this a lot. And then right there, believe it or not, dot, dot, dot. And she puts that little dot, dot, dot there every time before the snowman melts. And it kind of builds this suspense so when I'm reading it, my voice changes and I tell my students that. And I also let them know that it kind of cues the reader in to what's going to happen next and what happens every time Maureen Wright uses that dot, dot, dot. So that's just a fun author's craft to point out with this book. All right, for my next book, I'm going to share one that I like to use if you're teaching a Christmases or holidays around the world unit. So you'll have to really think about your own school and district and what you are or are not, you know, allowed to teach. But if you do any sort of a unit on comparing different holidays or Christmases around the world, then The Legend of the Poinsettia by Tommy DePaula is a beautiful book to read. This is actually a retelling of a Mexican folktale that was passed down from generations after generations. And basically throughout the story, it describes the origination of using poinsettias around Christmas time. So like I said, it's a beautiful book. And this is the book I actually have a bunch of freebies for you if you happen to use this in your classroom. So after you read the story, you can do a retelling of the story where you can share the beginning, middle and end. I also have a comprehension and vocabulary sheet here where you can see just some basic comprehension questions. You know, what would you have done if your mom were sick and you couldn't finish the blanket? So you have to put yourself into the character's shoes and also a little compare and contrast your own Christmas Eve traditions to those that happen in Mexico. Tommy DePaula uses some really rich vocabulary such as murmured, procession, comfort, and honored. So I have a little vocabulary sheet that you can use with this book as as well. And then of course for fun I have a little directed drawing on how to draw a poinsettia like this and students can draw their own. That free little reading response unit will be linked down in my description so you can grab that if you read that book. All right, the last book I want to share with you is called Light the Lights, and this one is by Margaret Mormon, and it is not a particularly deep book, but instead it is a light and heartwarming story about a little girl who celebrates both Hanukkah and Christmas. It doesn't go into detail. It's not secular at all. It doesn't go into detail about any kind of the origins about each of the holidays. So again, not a very deep dive, but it does touch upon quite a few of the traditions that that both people celebrating Hanukkah and people celebrating Christmas might go through. So again, read your classroom and your audience and think about if they could connect to a story like this, or even if they don't celebrate Hanukkah or they don't celebrate Christmas, maybe they could kind of compare and contrast the two or just think about how their traditions, or if they do celebrate them, they could think about how their traditions are different from the girl in the story. So there you have some of my favorite winter and holiday-ish books that I would use in the upcoming months. If you have other ones, I know there are so many more. What are some of your favorites? I would love to know. Drop them down in the comments below so other teachers can take a look and get some ideas. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up so I know, and make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you can see all of my new videos. See you soon. Bye.